All right, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of You Know What It Is. If you're here, chances are you know what it is. It's Form Check Friday. We take your videos, you email them to us, we pop them up on the screen behind me, we give you technique advice. That's how this goes. If you're interested in submitting, go to calgarybarbell.com. There's a form on there. Click on the little FCF link and bada bing, bada boom, you're in. Now, where we left off last week was with Kotaro. Kotaro was doing some deadlifts, so let's take a look at those. Now, just to give you some real quick background again with Kotaro, it's 455, 455 pounds here, an RPE 9, and he says he wants to fix his upper back rounding and mentioned that his lockout felt a little iffy as well. So let's let's start from the end just to flip things on their head. Why not? Um, with the lockout here, I think the biggest thing that's happening is, you, is you're just overdoing your back and hip lockout and that's causing your knees to come unlocked, right? I think because we get a little hung up at the top here trying to get that extension through, we really exaggerate the extension. And if we looked at you from the side, that would kind of be, right? the bar is going to stay over your midfoot ish so if you lean back like that the knees have to bend to keep the bar over the middle of your foot now ideally we would just see you like this and the bar would be here over your midfoot so when you're locking out make sure that we think about locking the knees make sure that we think about locking out upwards not by leaning back now in terms of the backgrounding it may or may not be a problem but it's definitely what's causing that little bit of a tough lockout. I think one of the reasons we're losing some back position is that we're just not really pulling the slack out of the bar, right? We kind of sit the hips down and then we jerk into it. And what happens is your shoulders roll forwards. So one of the things you could do to help yourself here is think about pulling those shoulder blades down your back. Think about getting your lats nice and tight as you pull yourself into the bar. We've got a video on the channel about specifically how to pull the slack out of the bar. It involves mostly thinking about not allowing your knees to come forward very much as you sit down. That was one of the cues I was liking to use at the time. I think in your case though, I actually want you to allow yourself to sit down a tiny bit more, even if it means your knees come a little forward, but I want you to really practice with lighter weights. Think about trying to get this bar to float as you come up off the floor, right? As you, uh, or sorry, not as you come up off the floor, as you pull yourself down into it, right? So as you're bringing your hips down, this is the secret to pulling a slack out of the bar. This position actually looks really good. So <clears throat> you kind of pump your hips back up here. Now from here, before you pull your hips down, we want quad tension. We want you pushing the floor away, actively resisting your own self pulling down into tension, right? So I want you pushing the floor away and then I want you pulling your hips against that tension while trying to find a relatively flat neutral back position. Shoulder blades, again, think about pulling them down your back. Try to find your lats. Sometimes the cue to, to pinch your armpits shut really helps. So those are the big things there. And then when you get to lockout, just try to keep some focus on the quads still and think more about locking out up as opposed to locking out back. I hope that helps you, Kotaro. Up next, we have Mateo. Now, Mateo has been, he says, casually lifting for four years um, and nine months focusing on strength. And I'm assuming, you know, strength being synonymous with, with power lifting or the power lifts here. Um, Mateo's looking to do his first meet as an open 74 kilo lifter in December. Now, he said he notices a few things himself, specifically in his feet. Uh, he says his heels lift off when he approaches the bottom and he runs into some issues of being too far on his toes. I definitely agree. I can see that there. Now, he says that, uh, you know, he doesn't feel like he's sitting on his heels and he feels like his depth is not great because of it. And he says that he's trying to increase his ankle dorsiflexion. So if we go back here for a sec, so ankle joint, right? Dorsiflexion is moving the foot upwards in relation to the ankle joint. Plantar flexion is moving the foot downwards in relation to the ankle joint, right? So he's trying to increase his ability to do this, right? Um, now he says he's rolling and stretching his calves, but he feels like the problem might be more complex. And I'm gonna tell you this right off the hop. Um, a lot of the times mobility is not the answer. I feel like every time I get videos sent in 
people are trying to do some kind of mobility or improve their flexibility uh, to fix technical issues and a lot of the times it has nothing to do with mobility or your calves being quote unquote tight uh, or any of that kind of stuff. More what it has to do is probably your patterning, um, what you've gotten used to over the years in terms of how you've chosen to practice this skill. And uh, in a lot of cases, you know, things like stance width, toe angle, trying to emulate lifters that don't have a similar body type to you, etc., etc. But I don't think in this case that your, your mobility or lack thereof is an issue. I think what we're seeing here is just that your squat breaks at the knees and at no point do you really trust yourself to hit, sit your hips back, right? You're trying to stay super, super upright. We end up with this torso angle here. Out of the bottom, we keep it really good, but you can see that bar, if we kind of, you know, draw a somewhat straight line there. Watch what happens to the bar as we get into the bottom, right? We come down. And that bar comes forward a whole bunch because in order to get to depth in order to get to a half decent bottom position you need more of a of not necessarily more of a lean but you need to be in this position and you're fighting against being in this position the whole time which is why we're ending up super far out on the toes now there's a couple different ways i like to coach this one of them being set your hips earlier in the lift right either do that consciously before you start the descent or incorporate that as a very intentional part of the descent we need more of this torso angle we need to shift your body weight a little more onto your heels obviously you know we can see that if we're trying to keep heel and toe pressure you know keep a consistent amount of pressure throughout the foot right now we are very much on the toes we're very much toes forward we're very much everything's moving forward so one of the things I would recommend is setting your hips ahead of time. So before you descend, before you break at the knees, push your hips back a little bit. Find some tension in your glutes and hamstrings. Find some heel pressure. Make sure that we're balanced between heel and toe and then start the descent. Now, there are some lifters who don't really like to do that as a sort of disjointed initiation of the movement. So what I recommend for them is just simply sit back more as you begin the lift. Allow yourself to lean don't worry so much about trying to be super, super upright. Uh, again, another video on our channel called Stop Being So Upright, um, you know, goes a little more into detail on this specific trend in lifters, but I think you're doing exactly that. You're trying to stay super upright. Um, it's causing our depth to be not as good as it could be, and it's certainly causing us to be very far forward on the toes. So the big thing we need to get is more torso lean and more pressure back on the heels by basically shifting the whole of the body weight back more as we start so i hope that helps and best of luck with that mateo good luck in your competition next we have nick nick is a 31 year old power lifter from new jersey uh training for power lifting since 2017 competes in the 83 now 82.5 i guess that means um usapl lifter set of three here at 315 now nick's target for this set was nine rpe he says he figures that was pretty much on uh, or on, on point. Now, he also mentioned specifically about internally rotating his hands. He says it helps keep his joints stacked. And what are my thoughts? We actually did a, an entire video on that with Connor Lutz. Uh, it's on our channel as well. It's called My New Bench Grip. I got all the, all the references today, all the references to our old videos. So in terms of the bench itself, let's take a, let's take a close look. So it looks like we got a pretty good position on the descent. Maybe the shoulders pop forward a little bit on the chest. We might be getting a little loose in that bottom position. We can see the elbows kind of wobble around before we press back up. And we can see the elbows actually tuck a little bit before we press on that third rep. I think maybe less than a nine RPE, which is good. That bodes well for your strength. Um, what I'm gonna recommend is not necessarily a lighter touch, but to maintain more tension across your upper back in this position right here. So if we watch kind of like right in here, as that bar touches your chest, we'll see that those shoulders kind of pop forward, right? We can see the shoulders elevate. We can see the shoulders lose a little bit of position during that pause. Now, 
we kind of want all of that tension and all of that tightness across the upper back in order to stabilize the shoulder blade so we can get a good press started off the chest so that we can break inertia so we can get that bar going and what we end up seeing here is this little bit of like additional elbow tuck and a lot of the times I feel like that comes along with trying to refine that tightness in your upper back. That comes along with lifters who have lost tension in the bottom trying to re-tighten. We get this, this extra little bit of elbow tuck off the, off the chest. Now, not necessarily problematic. It is one of the things that will, you know, cause a little bit more dynamic, perhaps a little bit more unpredictability in the lift and can detract from our ability to be consistent with our lifts. And anybody who's watched this channel for any period of time knows how much a fan I am of consistency in lifts, how much I want to see lifters lift the same rep as much as possible so that we can eliminate variables. We can eliminate a lot of the, you know, um, yeah, variables is a fine word. I don't need another synonym for that. We can eliminate the variables and we can reproduce the same technique. So I think definitely holding more tension in your upper back. Uh, this pause is probably a little short there, so we might want to work on that. But just sort of thinking about and, and, and reconceptualizing how we're approaching this touch. Right now, it's very much a loosening of tension. And... I think I want you to think about um, if we're going to use a heavier touch, that's fine. Allow it to sink in a little bit. That's okay. But we still really, really need to hold that tension in the upper back. We still really need to maintain that shoulder position and tightness um, in, in all those, you know, little stabilizer muscles of the shoulders so that we can have a solid platform to press off of. And you can see, especially on this last rep, we get a little extra flared the elbows come in and then they come out and then the press goes up. So um, that would be the, the biggest thing I would work on there is just trying to get that back to stay tight during your, your pauses, during your time on the chest. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the hands, I'm actually quite a big fan of that little bit of internal rotation, you know, uh, as opposed to having the bar straight across here, we rotate in a little bit. I really focus on this part of my hand when I'm bench pressing. I want all of the weight into this part of my palm and laid across there. So I do take a little bit of an internally rotated grip. It feels great for me. And again, we have a full video on it on the channel if you want more information specifically on that. And up next, we have some more bench. So this is gonna be Isaiah. Isaiah's benching 225 for set eight. And just looking for sort of overall tips to improve. Uh, didn't allude as to whether uh, he's looking to compete in the future or not, um, but basically wondering, you know, specifically about elbow flare. Is it good? Is it bad? You know, um, what are the implications of that? So I want everybody to watch through this set, head down to the comments section below and give us your thoughts. Give Isaiah your constructive criticism. How can this lifter improve their bench press, right? Go ahead, leave that in the comments below. If you like this kind of content, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like it, turn on the notification bells, all that kind of crap. Honestly, it, uh, it makes a big difference for the channel and we really, really appreciate that. Um, also, we do our live streams every Friday. A lot of the times we're doing form checks just like this live for our viewers. So come by twitch.tv slash Calgary Barbell if you want to check that out and keep your eyes peeled for the new merch because it landed and it's coming soon. Peace.